Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, Architect at Win Elect, and today we're going to be looking at Azure Container Registry security features. Today we're looking at security features related to Azure Container Registry. Now Azure Container Registry out of the box supports RBAC with integration with Azure Active Directory. So with Azure Active Directory, you can control the users who are logging into your Azure Container Registry. And then you can also assign those users various roles inside of Azure Active Directory, such as pushing containers, pulling containers, and signing containers with Content Trust. Now, the authentication and authorization provided by Azure Active Directory can be assigned to service principles users as well as groups if you want to get down to uh, group level permissions and so on. One. But regardless of how you organize that, these three basic permissions are the give you the ability to control who is contributing to that particular container registry and who is pulling stuff out of it. And you can separate those roles from your production environments, from your actual build environments, and so on, whenever you're going about assigning priv uh, privileges to security principles or users in your DevOps chains. Now, with ACR, you can also use Content Trust, which is the ability to sign images. Now, the way this works, is you have keys that are on the the build box and you have keys that are on the actual container registry and they're basically a, a private key public key type relationship and the validation is done by generating hashes that are a part of the tags uh, that are assigned to each of the images now when you turn content trust on the images are built in such a way that one of the tags it uses is a hash and then that tag will then be used whenever the content is pulled down to a local environment and then it will check that against the uh, the public tags that are a part of the image that when they were they're inside of the Azure Container Registry now ACR also supports VNet isolation and firewall rules as well. So with VNet isolation, you can turn on the, a VNet endpoint that allows anything on a virtual network inside of Azure to access that Azure Container Registry. And then with the firewall rules, you can lock down which IPs from the public internet can access your Azure Container Registry as well. The container workflow for Content Trust is very similar to the one for building standard images. The basic difference is, is there's a signing piece that goes in it as well. So with a Content Trust image, you first have a Docker file and then you call Docker build. And part of that build process is assigning to that image a hash and that hash then is then used in the next step in Docker push to generate the signatures that are stored in the content registry as a tag. So Docker push itself doesn't actually do anything yet until you actually enter some passphrases that are used to unlock some keys that are stored locally and then are used up in the container registry. And when that root key is unlocked, then it can generate a signature that is assigned as part of the tag in the container registry. And then that gets pushed up to the container registry as a signed image. Now you also have content trust turned on in the container runtime, usually when you use content trust in the build environment so that when you do the next command, the run command, it will validate the content against the signatures that were signed to the content um, and the container image. And then once those signatures have been validated, it will then generate a container that can run your application. So the signing happens on the local dev environment and it's a part of the container registry and then the container runtime will validate those signatures once it's in the container runtime environment against the signatures that are up in the container registry. I'm here inside of the Azure portal looking at my instance of a container registry and I have the premium SKU because I'm going to need this SKU in order to do some signing uh, later on. So with this SKU selected I can go into access control and look at some of the roles or assign roles if I want to using role assignments here. Now this is where I can assign those roles I was talking about a moment ago. Now here I can use you know any of the names I have available in my Active Directory instance here and this is me blaze.onmicrosoft.com so it's just one of the default domains that is assigned to 
me whenever I created these subscriptions. Now, I, I could choose this particular member here and then select one of these roles. I have the standard roles in Azure available here, owner, contributor, and reader. An owner can do all things related to ACR, and um, but if I wanted to assign specific roles, I can look at ACR, delete, image signer, pull and push. So if I was building out pipelines, for instance, and I wanted to use separate users for pushing images uh, and pulling images, I might assign something like push and ACI signer to my build pipeline. And then my deployment pipeline, I would assign ACR pool to so I could pull that image from that uh, particular pipeline. So you can separate the, the, the concerns here uh, if you want to add in a lot of uh, really tight security using role-based authentication and access controls using Azure Active Directory here. Otherwise, uh, the roles are assigned, and once they're assigned, you can look at them here. So here is one I've already um, assigned here called ACI Image Signer. I'm gonna log in with this user in a moment to actually demonstrate how this works, but uh, I did already assign the role using that add feature up there. Now, some of the other features that you can look at here um, are some of the firewall and network rules. Now, I'm gonna skip, go back to the content signing in a minute as it relates to the role-based access control, but I wanted you to be aware of these firewall rules and virtual network isolation that I have turned on here because this allows me to lock down the uh, access to the uh, Azure Container Registry at the network level to deny any uh, access by any random computer on the internet that is trying to access my container registry and, or to do a brute force logon, maybe something like that, I can just stop it at the firewall and not even allow it to attempt to log in. Now, by assigning it to a VNet, what I can do here is allow virtual machines, Azure Kubernetes services, or something like Azure Container Instances, when it's bound to a VNet, to access this container registry over that VNet. So it's a VNet endpoint at that point. Now, if I was doing all of my DevOps somewhere else off of this VNet, uh, I would need to assign an IP range or an IP address that would allow me to access it as well. This is the IP address for my ISP assigned a modem that they assigned to me and so I need to have that so I can actually run commands against my local environment here. Now I assigned this VNet here because I have a virtual machine on that I'm going to use to build an image later on, push it to Azure Container Registry and then I'm going to pull it in my local box and actually run it uh, if all goes well. So. With that in mind, let's go look at content trust here for a second as well. So content trust is simply on or off. So you want to enable that and just and it's on in the container registry. Now that's all you have to do to turn it on. And if you ever lose your keys, you can disable it and re-enable it, and it will remove all the keys that were assigned to images and then re-enable them later on. So. With that in mind, let's go and look at using uh, content trust and seeing how the access controls work uh, as well uh, down here in a demo. I'm inside of the resource group that contains my container registry and I want to look at the VNet here just to show you where I'm attached to it with my virtual machine that I created already. And this virtual machine is an Ubuntu VM that I have Docker installed on as well as the Azure CLI. Now if I look, this is the IP, the internal IP for that. And if I come down into service endpoints, I can see the container registry is attached to it. So that VNet is acting as the medium between my virtual machine and my container registry that I've assigned to it. So it allows me to access it. So to log into my VM, I just need to get the IP address for it. I've assigned a public IP address for it. And I'm gonna open up Putty. Um, punch that in and let's go to appearance just to change this font so it'll be good in the demo let's make it a bigger and open this guy up and so we should be able to read that on YouTube and let's punch in the credentials for this VM and now I'm logged in let's go ahead and get a sudo um, so I can get sudo I'm sorry not docker sudo dash I to get a root level access so I can do docker commands uh, in this context. And I have a folder I think I've already created called Docker, and it's got some files in a Docker file and index.html. Now, before I use these Docker file and index.html, 
there's something I need to do to turn on content trust. Now, the first thing that you need to do is turn it on. And you simply do that by setting an environmental variable called Docker content trust. So Docker underscore content underscore trust equals one. And then once that's set, you can you know, validate that by doing set and, and then doing a grep for Docker. And uh, you got to be able to spell Docker right too. Um, and it will show you Docker content trust equals one. That means content trust is enabled on this environment. So to run some commands to get connected to this container registry, I need to use the Azure CLI. Now, the way I recommend doing this is using Azure AZ login and use the credentials of the, of the user that you intend to actually log on to the container registry with, with the AZ login. And I found this is the most reliable way to do this. So to so basically take this URL and come over here and pop it into a browser. And then um, back inside of Putty, you can take this code that it gives you and then paste it in here. And then it's going to ask you which user you want to use. I'm going to use this me blaze out on Microsoft.com user. And then that's going to say you can close this window now. And then I can come back down here to Putty and it should show me that I'm logged in now. Now, once I'm logged in with the Azure CLI, I can then connect the Azure, the Azure CL, use the Azure CLI to connect Docker to that container registry using AZ, uh, C, ACR commands. And the one I'm gonna be using is AZ ACR login. Now, the, the parameters it wants are the subscription registry name and the actual name of the actual container registry. The only two that you have to supply to it when it's you have logged in uh, using AZ login is the actual resource group and the, the name of the container registry. And in the future, I think they're just going to require the container registry because that's unique on Azure. So to get that, you can basically come down to your container registry and then grab your resource group and then you AZ log on and do dash dash resource dash group and then paste in the name and then do dash dash name and mine is blaze um, ACR and that will log in, me in and says login succeeded and that generates a token that will allow me to access the container registry. I think that token is good for like three or four hours. So if in a DevOps pipeline, you would probably want to use something similar to this to log in and then call the AZ uh, ACR login command. Now I've tried to use this username and password uh, the parameters here, and I've had mixed success with that. I found the most reliable way is to use AZ ACR login and then uh, having first logged in using AZ login with the, with the user I intend to actually do content signing with. Now, once I have that all set, I can actually do some Docker work here. So I can do Docker, um, Docker build using this Docker file. So if I use do cat, uh, and now you look at my Docker file, it's just basically an nginx, uh, container that, that is copying an index.html. So if I do cat, cat.index.html, it's a hello world and all lowercase. So if I do Docker build, um, I need to do a dash T to tag it against my container registry, uh, host name, which would be blaze ACR dot a Azure, uh, CR dot IO. And then I need to give it a registry name. So I'm going to call it site and then call it V one. And then I'm going to tell it to use the local Docker file. And I need to put build in there before all this, um, like that. And that will build it based on the commands inside of the Docker file. And it generated a hash right here, uh, that it can use for the, um, the builds that it's going to be using downstream of this, uh, that the signings that is. And now that I have that, I can actually push this to the container registry and I, I'm going to use this particular image, uh, Docker push. And now this should prompt me for some passphrases after it actually uploads the image to the registry. It's pushing the layers. And the next thing is going to ask me to enter in a passphrase that I use when I generated the root key, uh, since I've already done this before. And it's going to ask me a passphrase for the repository key. And this one's going to ask me to repeat. So I'm going to punch that in again. And now it successfully pushed that up to my container registry. So if I go back into my container registry and look at repositories, now I should see my site container registry here and V one 
uh, and it's uh, got a single you know tag count assigned and so on. And uh, all of that is to uh, basically tell me that it's been signed, uh, that it's available inside of my container registry. Now I'm done on my virtual machine here uh, with my container registry build and push to my Docker registry uh, on Azure Container Registry, I want to be able to pull this image from the container registry. So I'm going to need this right here. And uh, to do this, I'm going to come over here to my Windows environment. And I have uh, in this uh, a client that's already connected to a virtual machine that is running Docker uh, in Linux. So um, what I need to do here, though, is something very similar to what I did already, and that's AZ login with the credentials that I have for my um, user that I'm going to be using for my demo. That was that particular user uh, right here, uh, Blaze, that on me at me.onmicrosoft.com, and that is going to log me into this particular container registry uh, on my local environment here. Now, uh, I've also got already set um, my environment here to use Docker Container Trust. So it's Docker Container Trust set to one here already. So if I do, you know, ZLS, I can get rid of all that. And if I do a Docker pull, I should be able to pull the image um, because I have allowed access to the firewall to this image and uh, and I've already logged in so and it pulled has already downloaded that image from the from that particular container registry to my local site here now if I do a docker run now um, it did use uh, container trust against that and the reason why it needed to uh, check it is because I had docker content registry uh, Docker, Docker content trust turned on and the signatures match. So it allowed me to pull the image. If I didn't have that turned on, it would just pull the image and not check it. But if the, if I pushed, if I tried to use unsigned images, it wouldn't let me, it would tell me there are no signed images up on the container registry at this point. So now that I have that, I can actually run this, uh, this image. So if I do Docker run and I do a dash P, uh, here and I do port, uh, 80, 80 to port 80 on the container image. And then I put in the name of the uh, container. Uh, I should be able to run that. And now that's running. I need to get the IP address of my virtual machine. It's 192.168.255.128. And now I can come back down here to Chrome and open up a new browser window and do uh, 255 dot 128 and that will should pull up nginx if i'm lucky um on port 80 i forgot to put the port in and there's the hello world image that i created on the virtual machine up in azure so we can see how the content controls allow me to control access to the to the container registry block access at the network level and then implement content trust so all these things working together give you a very secure uh, container registry for trusting the content as well as controlling access to that container registry if you like this content please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that wintelect offers including training and consulting services also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.